Welcome back to Antimatter Chemistry. Today we're going to be getting a better version of this mob farm that we got started last episode and I'll show you what I've done and uh, this should be enough to get you started as well. So same chamber really uh, we've got um, just let's go head down here for a second. I built another bridge across to the main thing just so I can get out here to build a platform easily. And in fact is there an angel block in this pack? There is an angel block if you need to actually do that. Uh, but it needs obsidian, which I don't really have yet, so that's fine. But I put down some drawers down here, the one by one kind. And the rob farm's off right now, but this is the loot it's generating so far. Has it generated any ender pearls? It is not generating any ender pearls. So here we've got this whole thing going. So we've got some of these loot chests, we've got two stacks of them. We've got this kind, which is uh, the dimlet parcels, and then there's a third kind as well um, that will get stuck in that chest behind the scenes. So you've got this chest here. Um, I didn't do a vacuum chest. I just had to go straight with a hopper. And um, we'll show you that upstairs. But we've just got a reinforced servo here that just injects it into whichever one of these uh, doesn't have anything. There's no controller here. So if you empty one of these, you can get duplicates. Um, so I've just kept it so that everything has its own slot and we can use draw keys to actually control that. Uh, just a straightforward thing that I can come out here and grab some, what, some of whatever I need from the farm. So uh, out here, we've obviously got the front of the farm. And then if we just have a look inside, because I've turned it off, I said we wanted vector plates. And I'm going to need to put those back. Vector plates have a nice feature in that if you hold shift while you're on them, you don't get affected by them. If you let go of shift, well, <laughs> you get affected by them. So in here, we have all those vector plates pointing that way. They point down away from you when you lay them down. And then underneath this one is a hopper going straight down. It's the speedy hopper, the gold one. And then in the corner here, we've got the two iron spikes. So it's only six by six. It's not very, very big, but um, it is certainly enough to generate us some loot. Um, and if we just pop up here, I can go down into the... Yes, and I know the fact that there is no... There's no... <laughs> There's no stairs going from down here to the middle to the top. You have to go up to the top, then to go back down to the basement. I know, I know. It'll be fixed. So we can just grab a stack of loot crates and unlock all of those to get nearly a stack of white antimatter and lots of other stuff as well. So that's going to start filling my inventory and I'm going to, need to find another solution for them. However, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. So on top, to turn this on, we can just turn these, these two lamps off. And you should hear things start to spawn very shortly. Cue them deciding not to spawn. I promise they will spawn. Spawn. Honestly, spawn. Okay, they have started. And you can hear them above us. They're going to be pushed right above this block right here. Well, two above this block. And they will start generating stuff as soon as they start hitting those spikes. Um, and yes, you could make the spikes stick into the room a little bit. That would be one option. But uh, to be honest, this works perfectly well. As soon as they all start getting jammed into the corner, they start to get take damage from the spikes. So I don't have to worry about it too much other than that for now. And we can come back to it later. And yes, I finally did something about these. So let your horrible um, basic draws going on, the two by twos, because, yep, I built the full thing, uh, the full periodic table in one by one draws. And that does mean it's remarkably hard for me right now to go and get helium or hydrogen up there at the top. Don't have any helium yet, but hydrogen, yeah. So I'm going to have to deal with something like that. I can access it from this drawers controller. However, you can see that the only part of the sort of rare earths and radioactives and heavy element stuff at the bottom that we've got is this, which is uh, dysprosium. Um, it's slightly different than this table. And the only difference really is you see these two dots, basically all of this lower section fits inside those two dots right there. The only difference is I've just moved those two down here and then we've got two spaces. So you'll see I've got two spaces and then all of that uh, basically light green, dark green section is all together. So uh, actinium and that onwards at the bottom, etc, etc. And then we've got these uh, spaces like that. So otherwise it's pretty much the same and uh, should be accessible again once we have something like a, a storage uh, sort of interface from A2 or something along those kind of lines, unless refined storage can actually see that beforehand. So I'm just going to get rid of these entirely for now. I'm just going to grab them all and I'm just going to dump them into a chest for the moment. And uh, whatever we need to do to store them longer term is fine. Uh, they're just various compounds for now, aren't they? Oh, so when I miss things like that, uh, there we go. Nearly empty. 
Someone did say, yeah, that these automatically get packed whenever you break them, so you don't need to worry about breaking them too much. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to empty them because I uh, would like uh, to just get rid of them for the moment and uh, maybe reassemble them later, but uh, not too sure yet. So just get those out of the way. So that's that done. And I'm going to expand the platform. I think keeping the original white antimatter, it is quite valuable to use it. But since we have a mob farm generating it now, wherever it is, um, on the other side or underneath me somewhere um wherever it is anyway it's generating white antimatter so we don't have to worry about it uh for much longer there it is it's pretty scrappy but i can always replace the blocks later and uh works quite well so getting on with today's episode uh, the first thing i want to get on with is just the quest so in chapter two near the bottom you'll see there is deep dark portal and if you haven't used the deep dark before you're going to need a few things one you're going to need string and uh, you're going to need string because you need a ladder. And if we don't already have string, we can make it with just protein, it seems. Uh, do we have some protein? We have two. Uh, I just want the recipe for string, please, and lock that in there. Um, why are they in there? That's fine. Okay, that's enough string. We should need one rope ladder for this. And if you haven't been to the deep dark before... The idea of this thing is that you start in the ceiling of the, the world, kind of like the ceiling of the nether. Below that is going to be a large, large, large drop and gap, and below that is a, a hard surface. So the deep dark is um, eh, troubling to get down from, really, and that's why you need some kind of ladder. Rope ladders do actually help. Uh, I can never be sure how what the range on them is, so we may as well just make one and let's see if that's actually enough. Now we can always get back, so there's a rope ladder. And the deep dark itself, we need the uh, compressed cobblestone. Now I stopped doing it because it was already making enough by far. Uh, it's I've still got the compacting drawer there that's got lots and lots of cobblestone in it. Uh, the other thing you can do is instead of just cooking up stone like this, like it has been doing, uh, if you want to continue generating resources, you can just take your chemical dissolver and put it right above the um, cobblestone generator. The thing, though, is that quickly generate, uh, drains your power unless you're supplying enough power in. And right now, I'm just not. Even when I put this in place, as soon as I put that thing underneath there, it will just take up all the power pretty quickly. Uh, it does just generate passive iron at that point and other resources, so it is good to do, but uh, maybe not quite yet. Right, so we've got a rope ladder. We just need the, um, the portal to the deep dark. So let's just get that down. There it is. Oh, that's quadruple. Uh... Was Portal to Deep Dark triple or was it quadruple? Triple. Oh, there it. Oh, okay. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> it's not the same recipe. Okay, so maybe I do need that. Uh, maybe I do need uh, some of this uh, compacting drawers. Let's see how much stuff did it actually have in there. Uh, we got some double, so let's just grab a couple of stacks of double and let's just convert them up into triple. Okay, and let's just, we need to get four quadruple, don't we? So that's uh, 36 we need. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. We should still be generating enough with that uh, previous setup. So 36, uh, there we go. So four quadruple. And then we just need the deep dark portal. There we go, deep dark portal. And that we can break. And of course, yeah, it gets packed up, so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, deep Dark Portal we can put anywhere. Um, I guess for now, I'm just going to put it near the Nether Portal. Uh, I tend to put the Mother portal Portals in the same place, just in case of any nasties. Uh, and we should be okay. So um haven't decided exactly where, so why don't you just put it there for now. Okay. And then the last quest is, uh, we'll get some stone torches, fine. Last quest is to actually just enter the deep dark. So why don't we go ahead and do just that? Whoops. <laughs> Stand on it. And this should take us there in a minute. Okay, so it's dark. And so get off the, <laughs> get off the portal or you'll end up going back. 
okay? And from here, you basically need to dig down. I wouldn't recommend digging straight down, but digging down at an angle will do the job perfectly fine. And you will get to a point where you drop into, well, <laughs> you don't drop into it, but you'll see a void. And at that point, you can then decide what you want to do as far as, um, as ladders are concerned. So I'll see you in a minute or two. And there's the void. Uh, we are at Y level 121. And you'll see <laughs> there's stalactites uh, sticking down into a vast open area that you can't see anything of. Unless you have night vision, you're not going to be able to see anything there too well. However, uh, if we just get rid of these blocks, my diamond pickaxe is about to run out. But uh, we should be able to just uh, get over there a little bit. Okay, make this a little bit nicer to get around in. There we go. And then a rope ladder, um, we should be able to put it uh, there. Okay, so I wonder if that is actually going to go all the way down. Let's use up eight rope ladders. So let's just go and take a look. Oh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> okay, when it says eight, it means eight blocks. Uh, that's not going to be enough. So I'm going to need to go and make more string. But hey, we're over here in the deep dark, which gets us this which gets us a devnol. Devnol's kind of useful. Um, just gets rid of all the cobble in your inventory, basically. So, yeah, make sure you use torches. Um, yeah, if you aren't aware, the other problem with the deep dark is that if you get into darkness, i.e. no torches, then it starts damaging you. So please don't do that. Please make sure you have torches with you. And back at the base, so then we have finished chapter 2. It says 88%. That's just because I've not done this hang glider uh, which just needs leather. Um, I'm not needing the hang glider yet, but if I explore the nether, which is going to come up soon, uh, we're going to need the hang glider So uh, and the, the slime boots as well. Unfortunately, no climbing gloves in this pack, which actually makes it even easier because then you can hang glide around, cling onto a wall, decide what you want to do, and then jump off the wall and keep on going and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's useful in some packs, but not in this pack, unfortunately. So that means we can get into chapter three, gather ores. Minor pause in the deep dark. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll dig down, need to dig down to less than Y64. Reason being, you'll only find ores in the natural spawning depth. There's a big open space between you and the bottom. Yes. Yes, there is. So clearly I'm going to need to make more string. And uh, we get a uh, 16K storage disk or ME storage cell. And we get some more recipes unlocked. Interesting. By getting the rewards. So I need some tin, some lead, some silver some gold and some copper. So I'm off to make more string. And then what's the next one after that? Now we're into Tinker's Construct. Now the reason why I haven't made Tinker's Construct, by the way, is uh, largely, oh, it looks like we're into Tinker's, yeah. Uh, largely because the controller, the controller needs uh, stuff we couldn't actually do. Uh, Tinker's Construct controller, smeltery controller, um, unlocked in chapter three, first of all, so we couldn't even make it at all, let alone anything else. Um, so yeah. That's not much we can do. Anyway, off to make more string. And you probably won't find all the ore all at once that you actually need. And I certainly haven't. I took down a couple of um, iron sharpening kits with me. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough by far. So this is uh, further, further, much, much further down the deep dark, below the uh, the ladder that we dropped, well, I dropped off camera. And you can see you just want to create yourself a completely safe area that's always lit up all the time otherwise you will get lots and lots of oh, well not otherwise but you will get lots and lots of ore if you decide to actually do that my pickaxe is broken so i have to go back for more i'm back here at base i should know that you have an immediate way to double your ores dump them in the chemical dissolver uh, in particular the iron ore so we should get double the amount of this out see lots and lots and lots and lots of iron ore coming out of here and of course you probably want some way of automatically processing that so this if for example is for iron and we can dump them in here well once i got the the recipe unlocked that is and we start getting iron so for iron out that means with some dark antimatter or light gray antimatter i should say we're able to basically go back and get some more sharpening kits and here's our final bit of tin whoops <laughs> Without me uh, doing that, here's our final bit of tin ore. And uh, yep, we can just use ore excavation to get all of that. There we go. Gather ores. Done. And uh, there's nothing else down there for us to actually grab. So just grab the, the tin. And we're good to go back. So yeah, all done with that. We're going to get um, the 16k 
Yeah, I want the storage cell. I don't want the uh, the refined storage. And we want to unlock more recipes. It doesn't tell me what that's unlocked, but it says down here you unlock stage tinkers. So I assume it's all the tinkers construct stuff. At this point, then we are then able to or need to make clay and a block of bronze and we get some more clay and then we get towards tinkers. So I have a long climb ahead of me to get back to the base. But for you, it's almost instant. Next up, we need uh, some clay. So the clay isn't terribly hard to get. I feel the need for some kind of, you know, sort of library ladders. Because <laughs> this is uh, nah, not great, but it's going to be at the ends that I actually need that space more than anything else. So that's fine. And then we'll just get uh, the usual thing, H and O, or H2O in this case. And we'll lock that in and we'll get some, basically some water. We just need some silicon dioxide and some aluminum oxide, and that will basically create everything we need uh, to make clay, because clay is just kaolinite. Or however you're supposed to pronounce that. Yeah, kaolinite. So uh, in there, we just need 10 of it, but we're going to get 16 out of this anyway, so we just may as well just get that going. And then we will just shift click those in. OK, and off it goes. All right, bronze. Now, bronze, copper and tin, as you might imagine, uh, usually I think it's three to one, I want to say. Uh, what do we have options for? So three to one. Yeah, we don't have a smeltery yet. And we need the block of bronze to actually make it fine. So we can't smelt it. Uh, we have to get it done another way. Uh, can we actually craft bronze by any other method? Um, let's go bronze ingots. Bronze, bronze blend. So if we can get copper and tin, we can blend together that way. And copper and tin we can absolutely get, so that's not a problem. And then we're going to need to basically just smelt that. Will that go in a regular smelter? It will. So we need one block, which means we need bronze. So I'm going to need to get some copper and tin. Copper we already have uh, some of there. I've only got 29 of it though. However, if we get the same doubling that we get of everything else, getting the copper out of here, and the tin, uh, if we get the same amount, or in fact, let's just get about four of tin. And the same copper, let's just see, does you have the same doubling recipes? You do, yep, that's double, and I presume the same thing for tin. Uh, we don't need as much of tin, of course, uh, so we can get that cleared out. Um, yeah, same thing in tin. Okay, and this will just be a pure output, so I don't need to worry about other side products. So uh, let me just make, um, was it three to one, wasn't it? So it's going to be six, two, and I'm going to need another six copper, but I don't have that much, so that's fine. There we go. So that's all of those together. And then presumably we can just take you out, unlock the recipe, and we can just get to straight to pulverized, I think, if we put this in the right slot. Yeah, so four pulverized. Another four pulverized and another four pulverized. It's 12 of you. And I think the Kaolinite goes, well, let me just double check this, goes in the top middle. And uh, that's eight. I actually oh, I miscounted. I'm going to need some more Kaolinite. That's fine. Uh, we can just make the copper blend here into bronze. There we go. And we can just smelt that up somewhere. OK, all right, so that's everything on the way, and I just need to go and get those other two blocks of clay done. So I'll bring you back in a second. And our bronze is done, so we'll go and make a block out of you. One block of bronze. And we've also got everything we need for the smeltery. So that is going to get us even more clay, which I don't care about too much. And then we've got to go and make the usual smeltery stuff. So uh, we want, uh, it's going to ask us to make a table, a tank, a drain a faucet, uh, no casting basin, well, that's fine. And 18, so 18, 19, 20, um, and we get 12 as a reward. So yeah, we'll, we'll have enough to get started. So let's get started with the smeltery controller. Uh, we're going to need grout on a lot of it. <laughs> and for that, we're just going to need gravel, sand and clay, of course. And we have the clay um, here, so we can just use those clay blocks. Uh, we need to make 10 for the quest, so you'd assume that uh, you need to use 10 to actually get everything done. 
Um, so but the rest we need gravel and sand. Of course we can just grind stuff down, but um, we can probably just make that directly. So sand, uh, not sabbed, sand, sand. Uh, we can make with just silicon dark side. So that's easy enough. Silicon dark side and uh, give me a stack of sand. And then gravel, the same thing, I think. Yeah, silicon dark side again, just in a different slot. Well, didn't give me a, it didn't give me a, a stack, but it gave me a quarter of a stack. You're going to get me a full stack. So yeah, I'm going to need to maybe make more sand to balance this out. Um, we have more silicon dioxide though, so that's not a problem. Okay, one batch of grout coming up. Uh, 16 batches of grout. I have enough clay, so I may as well. So we get two stacks of grout, and we're just going to need to just basically cook that up. Uh, let me just swap these out, and that will do for you. Uh, nice bit of this, uh, nice sort of um, feature of the Iron Furnace is the S4 output, so you don't have to empty it quite as fast. If you're making stuff like this that's taking a while, yeah, we're probably going to want to get a better furnace pretty soon, aren't we? Uh, okay, but uh, I need to then just make that. Uh, from that, what have we got? So uh, create two, two osmium and manganese. Uh, so that's taking us into a vacuum vacuumulator, which will help. That's towards the drop of evil. We've already pretty much done that side of things, so we don't necessarily need those things. Although the vacuumulator will help rather than using the um, uh, rather than using the hoppers. Up here we've got cyan antimatter, which takes us to indium and into the machine frame, and then we've got to go via yellow antimatter, scandium again into the machine frame, and then we've got tin gears in the middle. But the tin gears. I think we're going to need um, something else for tin gears. I think we're going to need like the, the compressor, is it? So tin gear, uh, we can, oh, we can make it through the smeltery. That's easy. Uh, we can use a gear cast of some kind. Uh, the other option is by using thermal expansion and a compactor. And there's other bits and pieces, bronze, magnesium, might not be too terrible to make, but we need copper gears for that, which means we have to go through, <laughs> we have to go through uh, smeltery in the first place to make any sort of gears. So yeah, we're going to need to get that done. Um, how far through are you? Wow, you're going to take a while. <laughs> when things are taking too long, you can tech up or you can just, um, well, tech out. So I've got, it's got lots of furnaces going and producing these sear bricks. So we're going to need a drain, which there is something like that. And then a uh, faucet, whoops, faucet. There we go. And a table. Okay. And uh, the last sort of stuff that it needs for the quest is a sear bricks. So we're just going to make them out of those. So that's seven. We're going to need a lot more. So we're getting the rest out of the furnaces. And then we should be able to basically make a default sort of boring old smeltery. But that will then get us a lot of other quick abilities like casting. So let's just get over all of you and uh, let's see how close this actually gets us. So how close are we? Hopefully those two stacks is pretty good. Oh, 15. So just a few more and then we should be done. Here we go. Should have everything we need. Whoops. Uh, if I get this right, that is. <laughs> There we go. There's the quest for the smeltery. Smeltery is now open. We get 12 more seared bricks and a couple of books as well. And the books are obviously the, the usual Tinker's Construct ones. I will get together a bookshelf for those later. Uh, so we have some options for how do we build this. Uh, this is going to be probably best done with the default smeltery size. So I don't know, probably something like this. OK, and uh, we'll just have it three by three. And then on the outside, of course, we're going to need to build stuff up. So why don't we just put down by default, just some stone, and we can replace that later, because that's going to be where we basically put some automation down, and that will do. Then we're going to then put with the outside walls. So I'm going to need a drain and a controller. Usually I put the tank at the back because, um, well, I suppose I'm not sure which is the really they're going to be the back side here, but uh, that will do for now, um, because we're going to put lava in there automatically eventually, and we don't really need to see it at that point. So it's useful having it uh, hidden. And then I guess we've got to decide where we want the controller. Um, probably on one of the corners, it kind of makes it easy to get stuff poured into it. Uh, whoops, wrong place. I think it's a bit easier to get stuff poured into it. So we can just pour stuff with a hopper. Not well, not poured, 
insert it via hopper or something else. And then we probably want some kind of drain, I guess. So let's just put a drain there for now. We can always rearrange it later. Casting table, force it, and we need to fill the rest in with sear bricks. So that should be valid, I think. Are you valid? You are good. And we have, whoops, ah, uh -oh, uh, well, that doesn't do anything, but shouldn't insert that by default. Uh, we're going to want to just get some more of these bricks and we get the perfect amount just to have a three by three by two tall smeltery. OK, so I'll just put a couple of torches down, not that it needs it, but uh, it just helps keep things a little bit uh, nicer because I've just got this. I've got the cross mode on with F7 just so that when I'm in the deep dark, uh, and other places like that, I make sure everything, absolutely everything is lit up and we're good to go. So we now have a smeltery. Good. What's next? Uh, we need to make some tin gears and that means we need to make a gear cast. Gear casts typically are either aluminium um, or um, aluminium. Uh, it's an alloy of aluminium. Oh, it's going to be in the book, isn't it? I can't remember. Um, a materials new armory addendum. You know, we can just make it out of gold as well, so that's fine. Tool materials. No, 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 no. I want alloys. Uh, one second, I'll do this off camera. Aluminium brass, that was the word I was looking for. So we're going to need to probably make a stone uh, gear first. Is there stone gear? I hope there is. Yes, there is. And it's made from a wooden gear, I would imagine. Yeah, so that's going to be really straightforward. Stuff in my inventory. If not, I should have it in a chest somewhere. I just need some oak wood planks or any kind of planks, really. And we'll get the... This is a sacrificial component. So that can go there. And we're going to pour stuff on top of this. And to get the aluminium going, I think it was three to one uh, a, a alum. Let's look at that. Aluminium brass. Uh, alloying is three to one. So yeah, if we have one copper somewhere, I've alloyed some of it into brass, uh, into bronze. Yeah, annoying. I should have been more careful with that. So uh, why don't we just make a few casts then? I, well, we, I've got more gold than anything else. Let's just use gold. <laughs> gold is easy, usually a bit more expensive, but given that we've got it in the deep dark. Oh, hang on. Uh, we just need um, some lava, don't we? I've got a tank somewhere with some lava in. Save me actually going and getting some more. We are going to need an automatic way of getting lava. We can either get it from the nether, of course, um, or we can get it from other places, I suppose, generation and that kind of stuff. If you have a particular preference, do let me know in the comments if you've played through yourself. I'm more than happy to hear that kind of thing. And lava is a very useful thing for getting sort of infinite power going as well. But for now, um, we'll just not feed this in automatically. I want it in manually. And I'm just going to put a couple, well, let's just fill that tank up. That should be enough to get this gold melted. And then on here, we can pop down our gold, well, our stone gear. And from that, we should be able to pour onto this with, there's going to be enough for two casts, I think, in here, because these should double with it being a smeltery. And then we just need some tin. So we're going to get some tin through this. So let's just get uh, four tin, I want to say. Uh, is it, How many gears did it say? four tin gears and each tin gear is four ingots so i'm going to need 16 ingots worth or eight tin um 18 ore that is there we go uh if you were still mining down there in the deep dark i'd recommend mining in two sort of levels one is around one of 17 the other one's about 30 or so at 17 i couldn't always find the um the tin i found everything else apart from the tin so I moved up a little bit into the 30s and found tin just fine. Uh, again, could be entirely coincidental, but um, you know it's worthwhile having anyway to, to do. Uh, everything else was found down at wild level 17, including gold, lapis, redstone, diamonds. Uh, you, you name it, at wild level 17, it's there. So yeah, uh, you may want to do that for yourself. Anyway, we now have uh, lots of tin. Uh, why won't you pour? Uh, you should be able to pour molten tin. Gear cast. Well, can I not make them that way? Am I am I hallucinating? Molten tin. Gear cast for two seconds. Tin gear. Molten tin. Yeah, molten tin. Oh, how very odd. I thought I had it at the bottom. Ah, maybe I didn't. 
And I'll have to go and look, look about the footage later, but uh, that is enough for me to get 14 gears. And then that will head towards the machine frame, which leads into thermal expansion. So a compactor, a phytogenic insulator, which now I know how they work from the previous packing breakout. Uh, they don't need sunlight, they just need three buckets of water and pulverizers and induction smelters. And they're towards the, the whole tech side of things, leading us down towards whatever is down here. Alum or Atom, sorry, Land of the Sands. I've never been into Atom. Never played that at all. So if anyone has any comments or tips and tricks for other people ahead of going in there, again, put them in the comments and we'll go from that. Okay, one more to go and uh, we should be ready to go. There we go. 14 gears. No rewards for that one, but uh, everything is done. Our smeltery is up and running. I'm probably going to make another cast. At some point, I'm going to go for smeltery tools. And this is another one that you may want to come into the comments. Um, because I tend to go for unbreakable tools, and I'm not sure whether people want to see a tutorial on that again. If you don't, just say so. And uh, if anyone does, then uh, maybe I can either put them down in the comments or something like that. I'll probably show it unless otherwise, but uh, unbreakable tools are great to have. We don't want to have to keep dealing with this repair, even though this tool by itself is already up to mining level diamond. We need to get to cobalt next, and that is going to get us into the nether stuff. So we need cobalt and we can get cobalt from, it looks like we can dissolve existing stuff in there. Anything cobalt illuminate. Can we get that from a light blue dye? Yeah, light blue dye it is. And light blue dye we can get from lapis, handy because we just went to the deep dark and bone meal, also handy because we have it in our farm. Speaking of the farm, just as I'm closing out the episode, let's go and see how it's actually doing because uh, I want those bones and um, get the light blue dye. Cobalt will obviously let us pick up cobalt uh, once we fashion it into an, a pickaxe head, and then we can add Ardite to it and go into Manulin and other stuff like that, so that'll be a, a rather uh, improved tool over iron, or indeed the diamond one that we had before. How much bones do we have? We have 49 bones. Okay. Do we have anything in here? We have string that it can't currently sort. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit noisy. And uh, I'd, well, yeah, I need to get more stuff in here. Clearly needed to make this farm a whole lot larger. If I didn't already mention, by the way, I did move in. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to be loud. I did move in the spikes one into the room and put an extra hopper underneath. That makes it much, much more reliable. And uh, so they can hit that spike from any side and it seems to just do damage. So, yeah, uh, from here, I'm going to go and grab that bone meal, make the light blue die and then uh, finish up. Okay, so I made 60 light blue dye, and we're just going to process all of that through, and hopefully that'll give me enough cobalt to be getting on with. Um, looks like it will, but we'll see. Uh, cobalt, illuminate, I guess I just put that through again to get bare cobalt, and we'll also get some aluminum. Um, I'm saying aluminum, I'm saying it the American way. Uh, don't, I'm going to get it wrong either way for some people, so <laughs> either way, I don't mind. I'm just going with how it's spelt in game for this mod pack. If it said aluminium, I would say it that way. So if I say it wrong, I'm sorry in advance. So there's some cobalt and we should just be able to turn that into cobalt ingots, I assume, uh, by the usual method. So yeah, let's just put you in there and cobalt ingots. Uh, we should be able to turn those into, uh, well, there's no real recipe there, but if we make a pickaxe head uh, from uh, Tinkers, we can get started with something straightforward. Uh, pickaxe head ha cast and it can be any sort of pickaxe head so i'm gonna need to go and make the tinkers sort of tools and stations and stuff i'll do that off camera between episodes but hope you've enjoyed and give it a thumbs up if you have we've got a tinker smeltery we've been to the deep dark we've got our mob farm functioning although it could be faster in future and from here i think we're going to be getting on into thermal expansion next and getting a lot more easy to process <laughs> hopefully, uh, machine stuff. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more antimatter chemistry.